gonna have Eric's our our big fish legend. He's gonna catch 65 pounds. That's his goal today. 65 pounds just today. The Saginaw Bay Walleye Club presents the 2018 Michigan Walleye Tour. Registration is open for the July 14th and 15th Port Austin Tournament and August 10th and 11th Sault Ste. Marie Tournament. Each event features a $10,000 guaranteed first place payout as well as a Lund Owner's Reward Bonus for the highest placing Lund. For more information and to register for either event, visit us online at michiganwalleytour.com. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Michigan Walleye Tour. The Sportsman for Youth event in Muskegon, Michigan is held every fall, where Mark and his pro staff are frequent speakers. And all these kids are here with their parents, relatives, they've all brought their kids out here to learn how to fish, hunt, do the outdoor activities that some of us take for granted. You know, and we, we enjoy it and we're giving back here today to the kids and their parents really to teach all of them how to do things that we do on a daily basis. You know, so there's shooting of guns, there's fishing in trout ponds, listen to seminars, how to catch fish, there's trapping, there's bow and arrow, there's, there's so many things that I'd have to have a list on a piece of paper to read off. Anything you can think of in the outdoors, the activity is here for you and the rest of the family experience together. So when you leave here, Hopefully you can put it into practice as soon as possible. And the one thing that I see is there's a lot of happy people out here with a lot of happy kids. We're gonna walk around here a little bit, see the rest of some of the activities in the area, bring them to you, and for sure you'll be able to do it next year when you come out here. It's fun watching the, the kids uh, learn how to shoot and being instructed by people that know how to shoot. So, you know, you can see that these uh, these booths that have uh, shooting events, they all are manned by good teachers. Everybody uh, is not left unsupervised. And every one of them, uh, you know, they by the time they leave, they want to get back in line and do it again. Tied that yourself? You did a good job at that. Look That's at that. Yeah. We're over here talking with Jeff Newmeyer right now. He's uh, head of uh, the education, Hunter Education. He's over here helping the kids uh, talking about tree stands and give them a little education. But I wanted to talk to you about your wheelchair. The, the, the Outbounder 6x6. Yeah. I, um, um, when I got hurt nine years ago, falling, actually this fall will be 10 years, I was coming back down out of a tree. And uh, I didn't use the lifeline and the, and the vest like we're teaching the, all the kids today and how we teach them in Hunter Safety to use the lifeline and, and the safety equipment to make sure if they do, they were to slip like I did and they didn't fall. It put me in a wheelchair and not long after I got put in the wheelchair, um, I got, um, I was introduced to this Outbounder 6x6, the guy that had invented it and made it, he was up in Grant, and I got the opportunity to, to buy one, and I've been hunting in it ever since. I, I take it out to Nebraska, to Iowa, I've been in Ohio with it, 
I've taken it in a float plane. Actually, just two weeks ago, we, were in, we took it in a float plane, a, a beaver, and flew it right into camp in Canada. I was able to bear hunt out of it and, and then took it up there to be fishing around the camp. You know, when I'm when I'm in my wheelchair, I'm depending on the places we go, I'm pretty stationary, especially like this out here today on the sandy hill. And, and on the hills, it's hard to get around. And when I'm in this thing, I can pretty much go anywhere where somebody walks through the woods. Now, I, I go down to creek bottoms and up hills and around, and, and it really has been a blessing to me. So when the guy that invented this thing, he, he decided he was going to kind of step away from building them and doing them. And um, a really good friend and I had the opportunity to, um, to buy the business from him. We, we jumped on it. I know what it's done for my life. Um, it's a hard business because there's, you're, you're with such a small percentage of people that need one. But for those people that need one to get them back to the outdoors, it's just an amazing thing. I mean, I know, like I said, I know what it's done for me. So if I can get that opportunity to other people to get them out of the woods, to get them out of their home, to get them, I mean, it's amazing how much I use the thing just in the yard, to do yard work, to be able to help out with that. It really gives you that, gives you that self-confidence back to be able to do different things. And, and then I use it with, with this, with hunter safety. Um, I, I, you know, the kids are usually pretty entertain what is that thing it's like a little tank and they just they you know they get a kick out of it and I explain to them you know I got to use this because I didn't use the proper equipment you know climbing from the trees so it's, it's really been a cool thing that they asked me to come along and help teach on uh, you know the it's always the field day I'm at the tree stand safety to explain my story and tell them you know and and then they they get to check the chair out and uh, so it's been it's been a really cool thing we're just getting it going again just launching the chair again and uh, just trying to get it out there to let people know that it's, it's available um, the nice thing about it is that it'll go through a 36 inch doorway um, it's uh, it, it's pretty heavy, but I put it in the back of my pickup truck all the time. And so if, if anybody wants to check one out, it's uh, Outbounder Life, or check us out on Facebook, the Outbounder 6x6. So check us out, give us a call, and depending on where you're at or wherever you're at, we'll get one to you so you can try them out and ride them. So. You're gonna be coming uh, next week up to Operation Injured Soldier in Pelston. They have Braveheart Estates. Yeah, we are really looking forward to that. That's that's gonna be pretty cool. That just to get it out there. I mean, all, these injured soldiers, they've done so much for us, and and a lot of them are huge hunters and fishermen. And to get them back in the outdoors, let them know here. I mean, I you can go by yourself. You don't need help. Get on it and go. And that's what's really cool about it. So to be able to show those guys, and then actually I was invited. I get to bring my boat and hopefully take one of them out fishing. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that too. Yeah, Jeff uh, has a boat and he is able to, you know, because of the equipment he has, he's able to still get out and have the fun experience out in the outdoors, whether it's hunting, whether it's fishing, going on fly-ins. Don't let that ever stop you. And, you know, I'm sure Jeff will, you know, if you go on Facebook and get on there, you could ask him a lot more questions than I can ask him right now, but thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Mark spends his afternoon at the fairgrounds, interacting with fans of all ages. They're learning how to throw an axe. Hey! Every one of these events, there's kids lined up at every station that's available to do some kind of technique out in the outdoors, some kind of sport, some kind of activity. There's a never-ending line waiting to do it all over here. So it's pretty amazing to see that these kids, they, some of them get right back in line because they like doing certain things so much. with uh, Mike Holmes with the Michigan Dark House Association from the Upper Peninsula and he's going to be talking a little bit about some of the spearing opportunities and some of the techniques and some of the decoys that they use for dark house spearing. You want to let everybody know Mike? Uh, yeah, not, about this? not favorite spots. <laughs> not, no, not, yeah. the, not the spots? Well, I uh, put my book away. <laughs> so we started in 2001 because the state was starting to put a lot of, close a lot of lakes to spearing for no reason, no science, just because they didn't feel that there was a lot of 
people that were interested in it. And it's a heritage in Michigan. The, the first, the first noted person spearing was in 1763, up where the Mackinac Bridge is right now. So this is a use on, this on Lake Superior. It's a herring. And the uh, main fish that they eat up there is herring and smelt and uh, and whitefish. And those, those oily fish grow big pike and, like big pike and, and muskies. So. Oh, is that hand carved by one of your members or is it you? Yeah, I do. You hand carved all these? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. To, uh, there's a little walleye. <laughs> well, you do a good job at carving up these decoys. See if there's anybody else and I know they work, otherwise you wouldn't carve them. Uh, what about the spears down here? You want to show us uh, some of the spears and talk about which ones you which ones you prefer and which ones? Uh... Well, spears in general, you want to make sure it's got a nice barb on it because you don't want to lose a fish. You take all that time to, you know, to, to learn how to spear, and once you get one, you don't want it pulling off. And with big barbs like this, it'll never, never, ever come off. There's a custom-made spear. It's made by Brant Higgins of Zealand, Michigan. Some of the spears that I have have a wood handle about this far on the ends of them. And what it is, it's it, it, that wood holds it like a, an arrow. Fletching on an arrow, so you can actually get a longer throw, and that holds it up. The, the problem with a lot of spears, this one is a real heavy one, but a lot of the spears is that that weight, after it gets, the, it loses its momentum, and then it, it kind of goes right down and you miss. So, the big heavy ones like this, you want to make sure that they're right directly down, maybe. right underneath. Yeah, you know, sturgeon spears too. Yeah, that'd be more. Bigger. That'd be well, the, stur the sturgeon spears are, you know, you want to wider, wider, but it, they have a detachable head. Oh, okay. Because you've got a sturgeon on there, and they start going like this, right. and you've got that big long handle. Yeah, it breaks elbows and wrists and knocks teeth out and everything else. I bet. So the, as soon as you get it, you, you pull back and take the spear up and then you're just handling it. It's kind of like fishing from there, only you got, yeah. got it hooked in the wrong spot right. when you got it in the right spot <laughs> for the spear. But yeah. No, well, thanks a lot, Mike, for talking with us about your Dark House uh, Angler Association. And uh, well, thanks for I learned a little bit more too. Thank you. And a lot more to do in the outside than people think there is until they come here and they get to experience it watch it and now they probably will go home and want to do it and partake in it so well we're speaking with my friend john gale he's in charge of this event here sportsman for youth and he has all the particulars he knows what's going on he's been involved with it for a very long time i'm going to let him explain exactly a little more probably than i have or maybe we've even seen what has been going on here today and how many people so i'm going to let john take over from here sportsman for youth has been in existence for 25 years 25 years ago we decided that we need to get the kids outside and experience the great outdoors and there's a lot to it there's a lot of different things they can do from fishing to hunting to camping to mountain climbing there's a lot of things that go on outside we'd rather have the kids outside than always in front of the tv or always in front of their computer and so by getting them outside to experience the things they've never experienced before maybe it's a hobby that they'll pick up and that's how this came into existence 25 years ago and here we are Every year we set record crowds. We have over 80 vendors here showing kids, educating kids on everything outdoors. And we had great weather today and record crowds again and it's just been awesome. So uh, we're happy to have everybody here and we get a great enjoyment just seeing the smiles on kids' faces and seeing them enjoy being outside. Well, thank you very much, John. Thanks for inviting me to Thanks, be one Mark. of the speakers. Thanks for being here. We're really excited to have you this year. Well, I'm looking forward to teaching some other people in my seminar coming up uh, with my pro staff, Logan Locke, and we're going to give them the little basics on a few things that will help them to catch more fish. Talk to you soon, John. All right. Thank you.
The Saginaw Bay Walleye Club presents the 2018 Michigan Walleye Tour. Registration is open for the July 14th and 15th Port Austin Tournament and August 10th and 11th Sault Ste. Marie Tournament. Each event features a $10,000 guaranteed first place payout as well as a Lund Owner's Reward Bonus for the highest placing Lund. For more information and to register for either event, visit us online at michiganwalleyetour.com. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Michigan Walleye Tour. Well, we're back at the MWT Detroit River, day two. Chris, Eric, and myself, uh, we, uh, we're sitting pretty decent. We're just barely out of the money right now. So we're going to go out and give it a whirl. We got our our spot towards the end of the day one of our better spots and uh, pulled the fish real fairly quickly and so we're gonna head back there this morning and uh, hopefully uh, pop on some good ones we had some decent fish seen some big fish caught and I think we can do it how what, what do you guys think pretty confident this morning yeah, yeah it looks real good uh, we got some uh, good game plan put together so hopefully we can uh, stick a few more in the boat today and prove our uh, Standing. It's plenty cold out too, 22 degrees, so. We're gonna have Eric's, our, our big fish legend. He's gonna catch 65 pounds. That's his goal today, 65 pounds, just today. type of walleye fisherman, especially a tournament fisherman, the first hour is crucial, especially when you're on big fish. Not only is it crucial for the first hour in a tournament, every second counts in a tournament. That's why being prepared is essential. And having, Mark having this Mercury 250 Horse four stroke is crazy cool to have. Because we got here very quick. We had a long ride. Probably about 20 minutes maybe. Yeah, that's that was a quick ride. Mark and his team start the day off hand lining, but after a stretch of time without any bites, they move on to a different technique. All right, we're to the end of our the run here. I didn't see any uh, anybody catch anything as they went by or two star craft coming up. They uh, like they caught one of them. Oh, Got a pig. He took it all too. 
good job. While heading back upriver, the team decides to give handlining another try. Feels like a good one, he said. I'm, I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> I got it down to barely moving here, so. I'm gonna head out to the river, is that all right? Because that will keep your line out that way. And I don't have to worry about anything else. Oh, yeah. Got him. Good job. The name of the game is to keep the lures clean. friends out here and haven't caught a fish hand lining up through here and should be catching them and Chris pops one on a floating uh, number 11 original Rapala so that was pretty nice. Mark, Chris and Eric are looking to end the tournament strong but with over 100 teams entered the competition is heating up the cold Detroit waters. Yeah we're out pretty pretty uh, deep water, about 37 feet, gives us number four, so we're way ahead of yesterday's schedule by far here today. With way and fast approaching, the rest of the day will be crucial. Mm -hmm. 